This is the only non-conference game out of the state of North Carolina for the Tar Heels this season. Dean Smith did not pick a bad spot to make it his only game out of the state. And his starting five tonight, the senior leadership coming from Donald Williams with McKinnis in the backcourt, Calabria, Stackhouse, and Wallace. The first five for the Tar Heels. And Williams has really stepped it up as far as leadership is concerned. We'll get into that a little bit later. Tony Maroney, he's got to do the job tonight against Rasheed Wallace. It is going to be a wild affair. And the Bows, as they call them here in Hawaii, as Tess Whitlock kicks it out of bounds. Stackhouse available. And North Carolina with the first dude to the contest. Jerry Stackhouse so quick. He's playing the power forward position. When I talked to Coach Smith today. He said, you know, I'm playing him out of position, but that's exactly what I've got to do because I'm short numbers-wise. Plenty of transfers for the Rainbows of Hawaii. In fact, they've got 10 transfers from either junior colleges or Division I schools. Handy. Even it up. Every basket here is almost going to sound like a game-winning basket. <laughs> it means that much to this program. They are really into it. They've got this building packed. Phil Handy, the consummate three-player, very quick. The game, the crowd's not into it early. <laughs> mile-an-hour fastball on that entry pass from McGee. And you've got to get the ball up when you pass the ball to a big guy. McGinnis, the point guard, at 6'4". A good point guard at the post up, and North Carolina gives it away again as Dewey draws the foul for McGinnis. The last time a number one team in the nation was knocked off after leaving the mainland and coming to Hawaii. Who can forget Chaminade? Uh, David and Goliath story beating Ralph Sampson in Virginia. It's a great strategy by Hawaii to call certain plays at certain times in this first half. It's a really good pass. Wesley Wallace on the inside defensively. 7'2", 275 pounds, Tony Maroney, a senior from Lockport, New York. Transferred from Marshalltown Community College. And he gives the Rainbows the lead once again, this time by a point. Both teams throwing the ball away regularly to start the contest. Donald Williams for a three. You've got to get back defensively. On a made or a miss, Hawaii's got to do a much better job of getting back in transition, finding the basketball, and then containing it. What a read by Stackhouse. Jerry Stackhouse. And a seven-point lead now for North Carolina. Maroney. Nice reversal by North by the Rainbows. You can just miss the crowd sitting on the edge of their seats every time Whitlock goes up. Rashid Wallace. Maroney didn't get back, and that was a real concern for the Rainbows because he can't get in a transition game. Rashid Wallace, of course, gets up and down the floor as well as any big man in the country now. You've got to be aware of North Carolina's quickness, and again, basketball's a game of transition. Once the ball is turned over, <laughs> Wallace has two. Dewing goes to the line. Serious way down low. Law pass after law pass. I love it. And now the junior from Phoenix with the outstanding setup off to the left edge of the free throw line. And right now the Rainbows of Hawaii only hitting 18% from the floor. They are only two of 11 so far. And what a rejection by Maroney. Handy, does he save it? Yes, but the Tar Heels get it. What a play by Handy, just the same, and he picks up the foul on the reach in. Phil Handy, so quick. Can it ever help recruiting purposes? As we all know, a 4 0 start for the Rainbows, their best since 1975 76. Go after him and try and pick up that third foul. Two free throws, of course, for Rasheed Wallace. And right now, hitting only 18% from the field. The Rainbow's lucky to be down by only seven after that basket by Whitlock. We have seen so many in and outers already over the first nine minutes for the Rainbows. Donald Williams off the bench. Best yeah. possible shot they can each trip offensively. Whitlock finally gets a three-pointer. Their leading score coming in, averaging 24. A game has seven now. Wallace the trailer. Wallace. Cargill has kept it alive, but it comes out to Harris. Whitlock's available. Instead, Dewey. And 
And the third foul on Rasheed Wallace. No basket, but more importantly for the Rainbows, a blocking foul is number three on Wallace. Saved by Whitlock at the half court line. The nine point game, Whitlock over Zwicker. Make it a seven point game, five straight for Whitlock. He's got nine now. If he heats it up, it could be very entertaining in Honolulu. Very clever with the basketball. Creates a lot of stuff off the dribble for himself. Running one-hander for Williams. And Brian Parker with another key rebound. Wetlock for three. Doing. Seven to nothing run now for the Rainbows. Harris with a penetration over Zwicker. It'll count. Anthony Harris looking for the three-point play. Labriel off on the three-point attempt. Up and down. It's been that way since the outset. Harris for three. It's all even. Do you believe it? 12 to nothing run for the Rainbow. Zwicker out in his zone. Mole penetrating that zone. And a put back by Parker. Inside once again. Gives him a three-point advantage. You know, when Tess Whitlock gets on a roll, he refers to his jump shot, his outside shot, as a Tracy. And when he starts burying those shots, he says, Tracy is with me. Biggest lead of the night now. Six and a half minutes in county. Left of the first half. And, and stack out. Following the play to make it a three on two. Stackhouse will go to the line looking for the three point play, drawing the foul from Parker. And excellent skills at 6 8, possessing many of the same passing and shooting skills. That's Phil Handy buried that jump shot. Fell the players when they got tired, but he was concerned about his defense, making sure that he didn't get outside. Harris over the zone and a two point lead for the Rainbow. With a big smile on his face. He's loving it. The game has come to Anthony Harris. He's become a Division I player big time. Stackhouse reverses for Calabria. And he nails the three-pointer. 2.20 left in the first half. They get it going to go number. Lenny Wilkins would admire that <laughs> crack shot. Three points are he'll lead. You like Andy's uniform where he's got the, the sleeve off the right shoulder. for three. That'll fly them. But... And at the break now, it is North Carolina 44, the Rainbows of Hawaii 38. We have the studio now with John Saunders. And Maroney, not ready for it, but gets it back and walks with it, but he'll take it anyway. See if they try to get Wallace involved with the offense early in the second half. Usually with the big guy, if you give him the ball and get him involved offensively, yes. You call that right, get him down on the block, get his confidence going. It can help his confidence and his play at the defensive end. Wallace has eight now. He's at even 50% from the floor at three of six. And North Carolina in a 2-3 zone. Test the outside shooting of the wide. Also protect Rashid Wallace. Maroney trying to draw that fourth ball. is blocked by Wallace as Calabria comes up with it. Williams, he's hit his first two. He Going right inside, and there you see Rasheed Wallace really giving up position to Tony Maroney, but he played the shot instead of playing the man. There goes Mr. Whitlock. Let the game come to him. Get in a flow. Don't force it. Don't press it. He'll get his shots, and when he gets those open shots, he can knock those down. 17 for Whitlock. Calabria. Maroney got a piece of it. Still got in. That whole play set up. Dante Calabria working hard without the basketball. Whitlock, don't leave him alone. Do not leave him out there. Yes, he moved by McGee. They've got the numbers for three. Look out. It's down to three. Three minutes into the second half. Three 
Ford leads with the car. He'll back out. Makes it five. They want to drop it low to Wallace against Moroni. You've got to like that matchup. And it's a seven-point lead. He's slowly playing, fitting into the system, doing exactly what Coach Smith wants him to do. Donald Williams making it a nine-point advantage now for the Tar Heels. Four is straight for North Carolina. Donald Williams doing it at both ends. He's throwing Chess Whitlock on defense. Doing. But for a stack out, good jump out. Four. Mom's well, 83 years old, and he says she doesn't miss very many opportunities to watch him when he's coaching. Wallace with the rebound going to Handy. Curry. He wanted to dunk, then he went to the fingertip, and he just barely got it over the rim. Down to five, McGinnis makes it seven again. Right back at you. And Barry Sanders is a special player. I bet you he could even play basketball. Molay. He's got three, and it's back to six. These bows won't go away, will they? <laughs> Great ball movement. Stackhouse can't finish, but you have to love the passing by North Carolina as Whitlock gets it away from Calabria. Doing the fingertip roll. Both teams have really picked it up, and the transition game, I think, has led to a lot of high percentage shots. Block out. The break is there. And the factor goes. Alika Smith hasn't played at all tonight. Comes off the bench and gets a big one. A high school phenom. Turn away where he averaged 28 points a game. Even token backcourt pressure from the Tar Heels. Well, oh, they, they push it up in North Carolina. Now it's three possessions in a row have really not benefited by running their offense. They've gone one-on-one -on -one and have not taken good shots. Doing, did they ever break down that trap? It was a textbook pass. It's down to four. Hawaii worked on that press offense all week long, playing against six players to ensure that they would get the ball in the middle and then attack North Carolina if they went to that full-court defense. They get it. Doesn't get the one-on-one -on -one move against the game. Three on three. Boy, is that tough for a true freshman? He wanted to take that shot. <laughs> That's the shooter's mentality. You never see a shot you don't like. Maroney on the entry. Doing it. Took it away from his own teammate. The true freshman. And Wall. Oh, oh. Did he ever take that? Oh, oh, oh. Back out. He'll go to the line looking for the three-point play. With three and a half minutes left in the game. Nifty worked by McGinnis to find Wallace. Wallace gives him their largest lead now in the second half at 11. North Carolina spurted and then sort of blew him out, but it was a close game for three quarters of the way through. It was only a three-point lead for North Carolina at the break, and Stackhouse <laughs> flipped on his way by as Handy picks up the foul. Little hip action. Misses the free throw. That's been his story all night long, though. He's only 5 of 11 at the strike as Handy hurries it and gets it. McGinnis blocked by Maroney, and then McGinnis reaches in. Play good defense. The clock runs down to four seconds, and you give up a layup. Aaron's got it over his stack out. They can build on for the upcoming matches. That's the way it worked last year as Molay tries for three and gets it. For everybody to pull together and to get the most out of what was remaining in that year as they could, they wind up winning the WAC tournament and going to the NCAA tournament. First trip to the NCAA tournament for this team in 22 years. Whitlock. That was the key. They needed him to really come through in the second half. It didn't work as Sewing loses it. Sewing does get it. That'll take us to our final, a 12-point win for North Carolina. Quite a run, though, in the first half and all the way into the 10-minute mark of the second half for the Rainbows, but the number one team in the nation prevailed. So that final score once again from Honolulu.
North Carolina 88 and the Rainbows of Hawaii 76.